much do you weigh? Uh, about 165. Does Chris Teeter weigh more than you? If you know. Uh, oh. You can answer it if you know. Does he weigh more than you? Uh, I believe he does. About how tall are you? About 5'10". Is Chris Teeter taller than you? If you know. Yes. Now, during the entire time you guys were together, back from September, mid-September through that day on October 12th, to your knowledge, did he ever complain about you, the Covenant, or anyone else? No, ma'am. Did you ever threaten any bodily harm to him in any way during that course of your travels? Threaten to kill him? No, ma'am. And on that day, how certain are you that it was Christopher Teeter who was the one that stabbed you at least four times in your gut? Objection to the testimony. Um, I'm sorry? So how sure am I? How sure are you? I'm 100% sure. Thank you. No further questions, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stevens, I don't know if you can see me from where you're seated, so I'll, I'll stand you for can you see me from that vantage point? Right, my name is Francis Bouchot, and I represent Chris Teeter. He was a former co-worker at Covenant. And I'm going to ask you a few questions about um, the incident that brings you to court here today. The, you testified that you and Mr. Teeter were at the Petro truck stop as part of a, a reset. Yes, correct. And the reset is pretty much a break for the drivers in between assignments. Is that correct? Yes. And you arrived at the Petro station on October 11th. Day yes. And you testified that um, you had words with uh, Mr. Teeter with regard to the cleanliness of the truck that one morning of the 12th. Yes. In reality, the discussion started that day before, did it not, on October 11th? I don't recall on the 11th. You can't say for certain that it did not happen on October Right? We might have talked about something, but I don't remember having a conversation with him about the truck. No. The, the cleanliness of the truck was a lingering problem, was it not? Uh, for me, it was. Now, you should ind indicated that one of the things that bothered you about the, Mr. Teeter was where he was placing the, what you described as piss bottles inside the cabin of the truck. That's correct. And you both shared a lower bunk, even though it had upper and, and lower boots? Yes. So, um, are you suggesting to, to us today that Mr. Teeter didn't mind sleeping or laying down where the piss bottle was? That's correct. Now, on the morning of the 12th, Mr. Teeter left the cab first, is that correct? On October 12th. October 12th. And he went into the iron skillet to have breakfast. Yes. And you followed him at some point after that? I woke up later, yes. Did you look to see if he was in the iron skillet when you arrived? No. Would you have sat with him had you seen him? Sometimes we eat together, sometimes we don't. Now, the particular day you didn't sit together because there was an issue between the two of you. Yeah, I had an issue then, yes. Right. And that issue, you were angry about that issue. I was upset. Well, upset would you be? How would you describe how upset you were? Scale of 1 to 10, maybe I was maybe a 7 or 8. So you were pretty upset that you were angry, Mr. Teeter, at that point? I was upset. Well, so much so that as he's leaving to pay his bills for that morning, you stopped him and confronted him about the cleanliness of the truck. I sparked a conversation with him. Well, that's what I said. You started the conversation between the two of you with regard to the cleanliness of the truck. Right? That's correct. And you did that in a public place where other people can see it. Yeah. Why did you do that privately with Mr. Jesus? My mind frames thing when I seen him, I wanted to state my issue with him. You saw him. You saw him. That's what I seen him at. I'll finish the response. Go ahead. You saw him and you got angry, correct? I was upset. And uh, Mr. Chief pays his bill. He doesn't stay there and argue with you. He pays his bill and leaves, correct? Incorrect. I 
temperate. When I sparked a conversation with us when he got our rate. Did he threaten you? I don't remember any threat. Well, if he had threatened you, you would have remembered, would you not? Well, you didn't feel threatened because you followed him back to the truck. In fact, you went back in the cab of the truck where Mr. Cheater was. That's right. right. So you weren't afraid of him at that point. No. But you went back in the truck to continue the discussion or the argument that you started back at the iron skillet. Uh, we both shared that truck, so yeah, I went back to the truck. Well, when you got back to the truck, you didn't change the subject. You didn't talk about sports or the ball game or who won the football game the previous Sunday, right? No, at that time, it was a bad vibe between us. Well, so we, had to, we had to see what was up with that. So the bad vibe was there because you started the discussion about the cleanliness of the truck. That's correct. If you had not started that discussion, there wouldn't have been a bad vibe. Correct? So, knowing that there's a bad line, I don't think we have an answer to that last question. Oh, state your question again. Can you read it back, please? discussion that created the bad vibe. That wasn't my intention, no. But what was your intention? I had finished eating. I'm going back to the truck. What's the first thing you said to Mr. Cheater when you got in the truck? I'm sorry I don't get the comment and everything. I don't remember verbatim, word for word, what was said on that day, or all the negative stuff that was said on that day, but I just remember, uh, well, just at that point trying to, well, I thought, you know, I ain't got to drive this truck no more, or, you know, I don't want to be with you no more, that kind of vibe. Right, were you gesturing there, or were you gesturing now in, in, the, in the cab? Probably so. And... The conversation you cat escalated to the point where you just indicated you I don't have to drive anymore. Do you mean that you were going to quit? That's what came out of your, your his mouth. So he said he was going to quit. He said, I ain't gotta drive this truck alone or something like that. Mm -hmm. so. But you just said you said that. After he said it. So you both agreed to part ways at that point? Yeah, that's the way it was going after that. Now who left the truck first, you or him? I left the truck. Do you remember giving a statement back on November 13th to um, the detectives that came to visit you at the hospital? Yes. Do you remember telling him you, don't, you didn't remember who left the truck first? <coughs> You remember, did you tell them that he left the truck first when they when you were interviewed back on November 13th? Uh, I believe so. Can you point to the statement that's in front of you where you said that? I don't have it. Okay. I thought the statement was left up there for his.
saying? Time that during that interview, did you indicate to the questioning officers that you didn't understand the question? I don't remember, man, the detective's whole exact conversation by heart. You have the notes in front of you, sir. Did you, did you ever indicate? Uh, I didn't have time to flip through it and read it and memorize it, but I don't remember saying that I don't remember any of his questions. Do you remember giving, being questioned uh, on that day? Do I remember being questioned on that day? Right. Yes. And do you remember giving answers to the questions posed to you? Yes. Were there any questions that you can recall sitting here today where you said, I don't know the answer to that question, or I don't remember? I believe it was a few of those. Were there any answers that you indicated to the officers, I can't answer this question because I'm not feeling well? No, I believe I answered all these questions. Were there any answers that you that you gave to any questions that indicated I'm um, under the influence of medication, so I really can't answer that question? No, I don't remember saying that. Did you indicate to any officers that I was under the influence of medication, therefore I can't really follow the line of your question or your line of thinking in this interview? Judge, I'm going to object to anybody asking at this point. Oh. Could you repeat your question? Did you indicate to the questioning officers that you were under the influence of medication that prevented you from following the line of questioning or your line of thinking? No. While you were in the hospital, were you able to cooperate with the treating physicians and nurses that, that were attending to your wound? Yes. Did you ever tell them at any point in time, I can't follow your instructions because I'm under the influence of medication? I mean, they understood my situation. They knew my limits. But you never said that. Right? I never said it, no. Now, so going back to the truck, when the two of you exited the cab of the truck, you're now standing in the parking lot of the Petro Stack, correct? Yes. And by this point in time, you're aware that Mr. Teeter indicated that he did not have to drive anymore and express his intention to quit or at least get another assignment. That's why I left that. Right. So why didn't he leave the scene at that point once he indicated he didn't want to work with you anymore? I just exited the truck. I cleared, I cleared the space. What did you take with you when you exited the truck? I didn't take anything. So what do you mean by clearing the space? It was close quarters in the truck. So, I mean, if you stand up, you're just right next to somebody, so I exited the truck. So you exited the truck, he exited the truck, and you were still in close proximity of one another outside the truck. So what did that accomplish? I exited on the right-hand side. I okay. mean, on the, on the passenger side. And he exited on the driver's side. Right. Which makes sense, and that's where you were standing inside the truck. Right. Right? So now you're in front of the truck. Right. Right, you testified that you were standing with Mr. Teeter 10 feet in front of us, approximately 10 feet, according to your estimation, in front of the truck. That's correct. Right. And you know he didn't want to work with you any longer. Why didn't you leave? Why did he approach me? I think that's not, my question is to you, sir. Why did I'm you I'm standing leave? outside the truck, man. My business. Why did he exit and approach me? It's not my right. I don't have to leave. So I'm standing just outside out, the truck. You just got out of the truck and just stand there. That's correct. Nothing else but stand there. That's correct. Right? 
you weren't threatening him at the point when you were standing there. No, sir. You weren't you weren't beckoning him on to come and attack you when you were standing there. No. Right? You didn't make any threatening or offensive gesture to him while you were standing there. No. The fact of the matter is you slapped him when you were standing there in front of the truck. That's incorrect. It's incorrect? Well, your blood was found on his shoe, and so was his blood found on his shoe. How did his blood get there? <laughs> Objection calls for speculation. Um, sister. You smacked him, didn't you? Never touched him. You smacked him in the mouth. Never Objection touched him. Objection asked and answered. You knew he had, you knew he had braces. You knew his mouth was vulnerable. That's what he smacked. Never touched him. Right. You never touched him, and he just, for no reason at all, came at you and stabbed you. That's your testimony today? That's what happened. That's what happened. Now, you gave a second statement, correct? You gave a statement, I think, by phone on yeah, July 16th, about a week ago. Do you recall that? Statement to who? To Ms. Hutchinson, to Mr. Jackshammer, and Detective Reagan on the phone. Yes, I've been in correspondence with them for the past few weeks. How many times? I can't remember exactly. Who called who? They called me, I called them. And when you called them, in the instances when you called them, what did you call them for? Uh, they wanted me to come up to New Jersey. I reside in Georgia to testify at this hearing. So I'm trying to get details, to figure out the plans, flight plans and stuff or what I'm supposed to do. So the calls you initiated were just for travel purposes, how to, how to get to and from court for today's purpose. What dates right. and stuff. When did you talk about the case in chief, this case? July 16th? When did you talk to Ms. Hutchinson, Mr. Jack Tyner, and Detective Reagan on the phone about this case? When was that? I don't remember what day they called me. They initiated and called me about the case. They called you to prep for today's testimony, correct? Uh, yes. You, you, you gave a statement back on July the 16th, that uh, in the course of the altercation between you and Mr. Mr. Cheater, you lost your car keys. Yes. Right. And you did mention losing your car keys back on November 13th when you gave your statement to the detectives in the hospital. I couldn't remember my last steps then. Do you know why they came to talk to you on the 13th? You ever concerned that they may be questioning you about something you may have done on the 13th? On, on October 12th? Objection. Yeah, one of my concerns. Oh, you can answer that. Well, you struck Mr. Teeter. Objection. Oh. In fact, you and him actually engaged in a fight in front of the, uh, the, the, the truck. No, sir. Well, that's how you lost your keys, right? No, sir. How'd you lose your keys? Honestly, I don't know. I guess bagging up, jumping up, or, or, or probably uh, running away or something. When did you discover your keys? 